Welcome to the tutorial on sequential circuit design using CPLD. If you look at the typical CPLD, it contains a number of macro cells that are grouped into functional blocks and the connections between the function blocks are made through an interconnection array. Each macro cell contains a flip-flop and an OR gate which has its inputs connected to an AND gate array. Some CPLDs are based on PALs in which case each OR gate has a fixed set of AND gates associated with it. Other CPLDs are based on PLAs in which case any AND gate output within a function block can be connected to any OR gate input in that block. This description is available under the concept of CPLDs and the link I will share in the above. Now moving on to sequential circuit design using the CPLDs. So this is the structure of a Xilinx school runner 2 CPLD which uses a PLA in each function block. So you can see there is a PLA in each function block. So this is the block 1 and you have n number of blocks. So each function blocks makes use of a PLA. So this CPLD family is available in sizes from 2 to 32 functional blocks or I can say it is equivalent to saying 32 to 5012 macro cells. So each function block as you can see has 16 inputs from AIM that is the advanced interconnection matrix and up to 40 outputs to the AIM. So each functional block PLA will contain the equivalent of 56 AND gates, a total of 56 AND gates. Next we have the cool runner to micro cell and the associated AND array. If you look here you have various things like you have a box 1 which represents the AND array which is driven by signals from the AIM that is the advanced interconnection matrix. So each of the 56 product terms that is P terms which we call will be generated by the AND array. So these are the P terms that you have so these are generated by the AND array. The second one is this number 2 which represents the AND array and it can have up to 40 variables. So the box 3 that you see represents the OR array which selects the AND gates for each macro cell. The OR gate 4 which is present here in a specific macro cell can have any subset of P terms as inputs. The muxes that are present in the diagram do not have control inputs shown because each mux is programmed to select any one of the inputs for example, the MUX5 that is present here can be programmed to select a product term, the complement of a product term, a logic 1 or a logic 0 for the MUX output. If the logic 1 is selected, the XOR gate complements the OR gate output. If the logic 0 is selected, the XOR gate passes the OR gate output without any change. 
so by complementing or not complementing the or gate output a function can be implemented as either a product of sums or as sum of products the xor gate that is present here its output can be routed directly to the input output block or to the macro cell flip flop input the flip flop can be programmed as a dce flip flop or as a t flip flop the flip flop can be programmed as an ordinary flip flop or as a latch or as a dual edge triggered flip flop which can change the state on either clock edge the ck that is present has the input and an asynchronous s and r inputs can each be programmed to come from several different sources so if you look at the max 6 this can invert the clock input or not so that the flip flop can trigger on either clock edge the max 7 selects either the flip flop output or the xor output and passes it to the io block that is input output block next we have the cpld implementation of a mealy machine and this mealy machine as you can see has two inputs two outputs two inputs are here two outputs are here and it makes use of two flip flops that can be implemented by making use of the cpld there are a total of four macro cells that are required two of which to generate the d inputs to the flip flops and two to generate the z outputs the flip flop outputs are fed back to the and array inputs we are the interconnection matrix which is not shown here and the number of product terms required will depend upon the complexity of the equations for d and z next we need to look into the cpld implementation for a 4 bit register and for that you need to remember how a 4 bit register looks like and what are the equations of the 4 bit register so this is the 4 bit register that we looked into yesterday which is a parallel in parallel out register it has an option of a serial input as well as serial output and the various equations for the parallel output were obtained based upon the shift uh, at the load enable and the output q3 so based on these equations we will see how we can implement the cpld of a shift register so for the implementation purpose we will be making use of four macro cells of the cpld the four or gate outputs implement the d inputs that were specified in this particular equations and a total of 12 product terms that is because if you look at this equation you can see that each of them has three uh, three product terms so 3 into 4 will be equal to 12 so a total of 12 product terms are required the q outputs are fed back to the and array via the interconnection matrix again the interconnection matrix is not been shown here so next is the cpld implementation of a parallel adder with accumulator again you should be able to recall the equation of the parallel adder with accumulator i will be uh, putting up the in the description box regarding the parallel adder with the accumulator and how we have obtained the equation xi plus b equal to xi xor with yi xor with ci so here we are mainly focusing upon a 3 bit 
parallel adder with accumulator and this will be implemented using a CPLD. Each bit of the adder will require two macro cells. So that is why you can see a total of six macro cells are present. So one of the macro cells will implement the sum function and an accumulator flip-flop. The other macro cell will implement the carry which is fed back into the AND array. So the AD signal can be connected to the C input of the flip-flop via the AND array. The AD signal that is AD, AD signal which we will be representing as AD. So the AD signal can, can be connected to the C input of each flip-flop via the AND gate which is not been shown in this particular implementation. Each bit of the adder will require 8 product terms as you can see. Each bit requires 8 product terms, 4 for the sum, 3 for the carry and 1 for C. So if the flip-flops are programmed as ST flip-flops then the logic for the sum can be simplified and the equation is as shown xi plus is equal to xi x odd with yi x odd with ci then if you're using a t flip-flop the input will be ti is equal to xi x odd with xi plus which will give you yi x odd with ci which will require only two product terms the add signal can be added with the TI input as you can see here the add signal can be added with the TI input so that the flip-flop state can change only when AD is equal to 1 So hence we get the equation as Ti to be equal to AD YI CI bar plus AD YI dash CI. For better understanding of the CPLD implementation uh, of a parallel adder with accumulator, kindly go through the video tutorial on the parallel adder with accumulator and how we have obtained this equation. Because without the understanding of the parallel adder with accumulator, you will not be able to understand how this configuration has been implemented.